tell you, if you really want to get to know your God, yes. you just can't praise him on the mountaintop. Yes. Anybody can shout hallelujah on payday. Woo! Anybody can get excited when you get the tax return. Yes. Anybody can be excited when you got a new car and new clothes and new friends and new this and new that. But when you really want to get to know your God, yeah. you got to know him between paychecks. Yeah. You got to know him when the doctor says, City of Refuge Christian Church, amen. We just believe in being busy for the gospel, amen. amen. We just believe in being busy. We believe in letting our light shine. We amen. believe in just being a testimony of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Amen. If people want to look at us, I say keep on looking. You're waiting on us to fail. Waiting on us to grow in power. People say you don't have enough. Maybe you don't have enough to do what you do. And everybody who's around you may not be there to pat you on your back. Amen. Some of the folks who are around you want to be there when you give up. They want to be there when you go in the town. They want to have the luxury of laughing at you. But I've had this testimony a long time. Keep on looking. Hallelujah. Keep on staring at me. Keep on talking about me. But the more you look at me, you want to see the light of the glorious gospel. Hallelujah. If you're born again, find your name and say, I'm so glad you're saved. Chapter number number fourteen. I realize this is this is a Wednesday night. Isn't it? Yes. My days are all mixed. It's Wednesday night, Bible study night. Amen. We're not we're, we're going to try not to keep you too long. We got uh, seventy two hours worth of praise to get in. So we're going to right. move expeditiously <laughs> if we can. Amen. Yes, Hallelujah. Lord. Amen. If you have Matthew chapter number fourteen, I want you to meet me in verse number twenty two. And it is custom and uh, one has already said, but in, in our house we stand. Yeah. For the reading of the word of God. Amen. Amen. If you would be so inclined. Amen. Uh, verse number uh, 22. In the word of God. Uh, chapter Matthew 14. Verse number 22 is our, is our target scripture we're going to start with. And the word of God reads that immediately Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship. Yes. And to go before him to the other side. When he sent the multitude away. And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. Jesus. When the evening had come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. Mm -hmm. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, uh, 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 walking. On the sea, and when the disciples saw him walk on the sea, they were troubled and saying, It is a spirit. Uh -huh. They cried out for fear, but immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer. Yes, Boy, that, that, yes. that'll preach all by itself yes, right yes, there. Yes, yes. It is I, be not afraid. And when Peter answered him and said, Lord, uh -huh, if it be you, Bid me yes. come to you yes. on the oh, water. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm. Hallelujah, and to his surprise, listen here, Jesus said, Come. Uh -huh. Jesus. <laughs> my, my, my. Be careful what you ask for, you yes. just might get it. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, yes. he walked on the water. To go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind was boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Yes. Has anybody ever been there before? Yes. Mm. And immediately, Jesus. 
angel stretched forth his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, wherefore did you doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, you are the Son of God. Hmm. Hallelujah. Thus is the reading of God's precious and his most holy word. There's a, there's a key verse I want to give you, but the key verse is not written in your Bible. Hmm. See, Dr. Joy, what in the world are you talking about? Huh? <laughs> if you were to go with me, hmm, Jesus. My, my, my. Ah. Verse number 31 mm -hmm. and verse number 32. There is some additional information yes, yes. that Matthew, obviously being led by the Spirit of God, mm -hmm. and you may have to see, did not put into writing. Uh -huh. Yet I'm submitting to you that there is yet another miracle yes, yes. woven in the text. Ah, yes, it is. Hmm. I call it mine. No, I'm not adding to the scripture. I know the word of God. Don't add nor take away. I'm not suggesting to you that Matthew somehow erred in his writing and I'm fixing something that's broken the word of God. That is not what I was suggesting. I'm only suggesting there was more information between 31 and 32 that blows my mind. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would give me the wisdom, the intellect, and the know-how, and the Spirit of God to preach a word tonight that would just lift up and inspire and motivate and hold and build up and fortify and even celebrate the work that you're doing in this glorious house. Father, in the name of Jesus, we all decrease that you might increase all the more. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Ah, my, 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 my. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew 14 paints for us this glorious picture that has woven within it a story that most of us knew even when we first came to the gospel. If you were like me, before I was even right with God, when I was a young knucklehead running around the streets of Florida, and everybody knew the story of Peter walking on the water. Oh my. Imagine that a man, a mortal man, stepping out of a boat and walking on the water. And it blows my mind to think God blessed somebody to do something that nature and science and physics says is impossible. Yet when you are touched by God, you can do things that make no sense to nobody else. Have you ever survived something that you know you should not? Oh, come on. I know you. I know you're strong and, and, and mighty and fortified and a prayer warrior. But if you're like me, I've had days when I was scratching my head and I was wondering, God, if you don't move, I don't know how in the world I'm coming out of this. Hallelujah. But it's a good thing when you look back and you don't have to wonder how you made it over. Come on, somebody. Not by might, no. Oh, I hear you. I hear you. But by the Spirit said, Lord, oh, it's a good thing when God can help you do something that your friend said couldn't be done. 
he said to Jesus, give me the power to do that. Now he was just probably trying to make his friends think he was devious, trying to say a little something to get everybody excited. I bet he never anticipated Jesus saying, okay, come. Now what do you do when you don't spoke something? Now you got to walk in and come on somebody. scripture in Matthew 14 verse 31 and 32 there is there is some additional information that I'm going to lead into in just a while but just because I don't you're still wondering what in the world is that crazy preacher talking about but let me just give you just a taste of it. we're going to preach it but let me just give you a taste on it everybody knows the story of Peter walking on the water how many folks would like to walk on water Come on, somebody. I, I know to give it a try. <laughs> Come on now. You know how we do it. If we do something like you say, probably not you. But you walk on water. You know if we walk on water, we're going to write a book about it. We're going to put a name on it. We're going to make a service called the Walk on Water Service. Come on. Hallelujah. But, 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 but what about God just giving you the power to do something that you don't think can be done? Wait, wait. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Peter walked on the water. Amazing. That alone will preach. He could have spent the rest of his life just talking about how he walked on water. He could have wrote books and had revivals and had testimony services. He could just talk because yes, nobody else had done what he had done. But he was walking on water and he took his eyes off Jesus. And isn't that a good example of the body of Christ? We could be doing real well, walking real good and now the old boyfriend comes by. Now you're looking at old boyfriend again. Or a storm comes your way. You took your eyes off the storm. Or maybe you know God is not going to leave you. Now you feel lonely. Now you now you wonder about the old days again. Come, oh, come on. You can be taking our eyes off Jesus before. Come on, somebody. Peter took his eyes off Jesus. And in that moment he took his eyes off Jesus, the Bible says that he began to go down. It's amazing. Things you walk on today, don't think you're walking on your own power. That's nobody. But the Lord that's holding you. And the moment you take your eyes on the Lord, you start to go. Tell you later, I've come too far to go down now. Been too too much to go down now. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. The devil's mama is a liar. The devil to step out there. I told you to keep your little mouth quiet. You're too dumb. You speak too soon. Then you're trying to step and do too much. You know, some folks are trying to hold you back because they know you just might succeed. Yeah. Hallelujah. They don't want you to do something because they done told everybody else that you can't do it, but they know you're crazy enough to believe in Submitting to you that there is more information in this text, and there is another place that we can get our shout on. Everybody can shout when he walked on water the first time, everybody can shout when he went down and the Lord picked him back up. Hallelujah! Yeah, hallelujah. In case you hadn't realized, he walked on the water, he stepped. Out of the boat. Uh -huh. Yes, he did. He was struck. His little stuff left me. Got to thinking he was all that in a bag of chips and french fries and whatever else stuff y'all eat. And he started going down and he looked out and said, Lord, save me. And God doing what only God can do. Grabbed him by his hair. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Take the time. Find your neighbor and say, neighbor, I still believe. Reaching forward to what is before me, your God is not worth. 
And so, the greatness of our God, hallelujah, all throughout your Bible, powerful, powerful indicators of the greatness of your God. Jesus was with his disciples one day. He needed an offering. He reached into his pocket and only had a handful of lint. So he told his young disciple, I want you to go down to the waterfront. And when you get down to the coastline, you're going to see a fish come up to you. And the fish is going to open up his mouth and have money in his mouth. That's just how powerful your God is. He meets a man by the name of Lazarus. Lazarus has been dead for four days. Hallelujah. He goes down to the tomb where Lazarus has been laid. And he says to them, he says to Mary and Martha, he says, if you will believe, yes, sir. Yes, sir. you will see the glory of God. Tap your neighbor and say, I still believe. Jesus goes down to the tomb. They rolled the stone away. Then they tried to give Jesus some facts as if he didn't know the truth. He said, don't roll the stone away because by now he's stinking. Well, well, hallelujah. hallelujah. And you know many folks have looked at our lives and have said the same thing about you and I. No sense in worrying about Pastor Keisha and Dr. Jerome. Their lives are over. By now their lives stinking. And there are some folk around you who are talking about you behind your back. And they are saying how bad you're stinking. Your life is over. stone away. Jesus then says, Lazarus come forth. And then a man who has been dead for four days, rigor mortis, come and go. Decomposition has already started in the body. There is no more blood flow, no more blood coagulation, no more minds and impulses and synapses in the brain. He is for all intents and purposes a dead man. Come on somebody. But when that word But there are a few things. There are a few things that you must know. Number one, you must know whose you are. You must know who you belong to. Many Christians make the, the, the damaging assessment of let, letting Christianity be cast in the same light uh -huh, uh -huh. in every other religion, every other system of belief. But that would be a slight, be a slight in your God's face because Christianity is like no other religion in the world because we serve a risen and living God. You've got to know who's y'all. To know that the God who created the heavens and the earth has you in the palm of his hand. Hallelujah. You serve the God that spoke light into existence, that formed worlds from his whole mouth. You serve the God who divided seas, who cast down enemies, who raised the dead, who fed the multitude, who walked on the water. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. He said, Oh my, you've got to know who. You are, hallelujah, your God is awesome, yes, yes, has yes. absolutely no rival, nothing equals your God. He said, I tried to find somebody who I can swear by, and I searched the heavens, I searched the earth, and I searched the nature, and I didn't find nobody who was even on my same level, so I swore by myself. And that's the God that you serve 
and you are that important to God that the very hairs on your head are numbered. That's how good your God is, and that's how well He knows you. You got to know who's you are. Hallelujah. That's what he tried to encourage Joshua with when Joshua took over for Moses at the death of Moses. He said, don't worry about the trouble you got to go through. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. And then he says, now since I'm with you, everywhere your feet shall trot. I've given that unto you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, no man can stand before you all the days of your life. Hallelujah. You got to know who you belong. The second thing you got to know, you got to know who you are in God. Stop discounting and discrediting and short and short circuiting and, 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 and diminishing your own testimony and who you are. When you understand who it is that's working in your life, you are not just the same old person you used to be. Trust me, I was a hot mess when I was younger. Hallelujah. I'm strong